Today we're here with Jared Martin in the Royal Purple booth, and there's a huge crowd because we're getting ready to unveil another car here. But before we get into that, we recently did a series of videos that kind of clear up some of the myths of using synthetic oil. And we talked about, you know, does the oil cause leaks? And we touched on how uh, synthetic oil can kind of make its way past some of the buildup on worn out seals. So, you know, may or may not. Uh, but we did get a question after we posed the series about is it okay to switch back and forth if you need to from a synthetic to a, a non-synthetic? Sure, yeah, I mean, synthetic oils are, all synthetic oils used for automotive formulation, should I say, are compatible with mineral grade products. About the only synthetic base stock you're going to find an incompatibility issue with is polyethylene glycols, which are common to AC systems. So, oh, okay. you know, getting back to that, you're not going to find an automotive based lubricant that's going to have issues with mineral based products. So, you can switch it, you can use it before, you can use it after. If you were running a synthetic and you were a low accord and all you could find was mineral oil, you could top it off with mineral oil because it's completely compatible. Wow. It's not an issue. Interesting. Well, another uh, response we got was regarding additives. Uh, some people say that they used a uh, conventional oil with an additive they really liked, and is it a good idea if they switch to a synthetic to continue to add another bottle of something? Don't ever, I, I can't think of any oil manufacturer or engine manufacturer or really anybody that recommends the use of additives. And the reason being is, it's not just what's in the oil. When you build a finished product, it's an order that you put it together and at what temperature you put it together. So just dumping it in after the fact, you don't know that you're going to get uniform atomization, uniform suspension of that additive, whether it be a zinc phosphorus, GDDP type additive, some of these guys are doing flat tappets or, or whatever. You don't know that it's going to be suspended uniformly. It could settle to the bottom. It could be out of range of the pickup tube. Who knows if you're even getting it circulating through the motor. Interesting. It's, it's not only what's in the oil, it's when it went in and at what temperature it was added to the base stock. Well, and one of the things that Royal Purple advertises is that your blend has good stuff in it on a variety of different levels. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of one, you know, Royal Purple's claim to fame is we are, we got into this business with the center lick technology. So, and that's really been what made us who we are. It amplifies the film strength of the product as well as the oxidation resistance well beyond even what other synthetics offer. And it's due to add, I mean, 15 to 25 percent of the finished product is going to be added. That's what we focus on because that's really what's defining the performance. I always tell people, a lot of people define products by, well, is it mineral, is it synthetic, what base stock is it, how much, what's the percentage? Guys, just think of that base stock as being a carrier. Absolutely, synthetic is a better carrier, but what's doing all the work is that 15 to 25 percent additives, and that's our specialty. And that's already in the box. Okay, last one I'm going to bug you with is this discussion that goes on and on and on for oil change intervals and you know who do you listen to what's the best uh, oil change interval if you're really looking to maximize oil change interval there's only one way to do that and it's trend oil analysis you know some people a lot of people will take a single data point and they'll determine well the oil is a good oil it's a bad oil you can't take one one data point and develop a trend it takes at least three so you want to get into an oil sampling program if you're looking to maximize your drain intervals and you really it's very difficult to do because your driving habits change. Every engine's different. Change. Environment. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with a single, you know, we, we do a lot of fleet testing with fleet vehicles. And it's really hard to, without doing a long distance trend in a certain vehicle, it's not only, you know, it's from the same vehicle. You've got to take data points, you've got to take them you know, consistently. Not only that, but you have to take the oil from the same portion. You know, if you can't use a vampire pump one time and then pull the plug the next time and expect those to be a good comparison. So it's really, it's, it's, that's the best way to do it. Other than that, there's really no true way other than listening to the manufacturers because I don't know a manufacturer out there that's going to stick their neck out and recommend too long of an oil drain interval. Sure. You know, we recommend 15,000 miles on our new HMX. That's going to be safe. Could it go longer? Probably, but I would not do that. It's like, I would not do that with oil sampling. It's like me telling you, hey, don't worry about ever getting your blood checked. You're going to live till you're 100 years old. <laughs> right. Don't worry about it. You're going to yeah, be fine. Well, no, you're going to want to make sure you go to the doctor and check on that. So anytime you're really extending drain intervals, 
I mean, you could have a PCB issue. You could be using a, a, a poor quality air filter. There could be something wrong with the air filtration system. A lot of things that the oil can't control. So you really, on that particular unit, you want to do trend oil analysis if you're looking to get the absolute maximum oil trend. But the funny thing is, uh, in our genre of performance cars and people's you know hot rods, they trend the other way, where they're like 3,000 miles changing no matter what. That's good for business, but yeah, they don't have to. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the people are, are largely on the They're kind of trained. Cautious. Yeah, and you know, what we'll recommend for people with hot rods, and it's, it's probably going to be pretty conservative, but to change it every year. If you're not putting a lot of miles on it, change it every year, because then what becomes the issue is the condensation that builds up in the oil, the fuel contamination. It's taking its toll on the oil while it's just sitting there in the sump not being used. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. best practice is to change it annually just before you put it away for the winter. Mm -hmm. so that way you're storing it with oil that has no water in it, has no byproducts of combustion in it, no fuel, no anything, so it's fresh oil. Well, good, I haven't been lying, because that's what I tell people. Good. Uh, you guys have some new stuff here? We do. We've got uh, been a big year for Royal Purple. Uh, now, as you know, we're a part of the, the Calumet uh, brand of specialty products, and yep. it's given us a lot of uh, a lot of resources to bring out some really cool products, and we're really excited about that. We're bringing out a product called Max Tank, which is a diesel additive. It's good for cleaning the complete diesel fuel system. It is an anti-gel. It is a seat tamer uh, mm -hmm. improver. As well, it provides lubricity to basically, you know, a lot of your diesel fuels have low sulfur. So it's providing yeah. that lubricity back to the injectors, the injector pumps, everything. We have lost that with some of the new fuels. Seems like three or four things in one. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a very good product. And that's basically all you need to run with your diesel. I mean, mm -hmm. We've got it in two sizes. We've got a 10 ounce, which will treat up to a 50 gallon tank. And then we've got the uh, 20 ounce, which will treat obviously a 100 gallon tank. Something you recommend doing a shot of every once in a while or run it all the time? Or well, it depends on your needs. I mean, if you're in cold weather and anti-gel is a constant threat, obviously you're going to want to run some type of anti-gel all the time. So it really just depends on the needs of the consumer. Well, that's cool. So you got the diesel product. What else are we looking at? Uh, we actually just launched a product called Max Boost. Uh, it boosts octane numbers by, I think it's up to three actual numbers. So if you've got a 91, it'll boost it up to like a 94. Really? And the cool thing about that is not only is it a booster, we've seen boosters all over the place. That's great. It's actually a stabilizer as well. So it combats the effects that the ethanols are having on our fuels. You know, they they yeah. tend to absorb water and tend to gel. It's going to stabilize the fuel. And that's kind of considering that those people who want an octane boost don't drive every day and the car might sit for a while? Exactly. So usually something like that, like I actually use it in my bikes, my, my motocross bikes. And yeah. I run pump gas and it just gets too expensive to run. Right, that's what you got, yeah. <laughs> so basically, but you know, they need the higher octane. I'm running a 14 to 1 450 motor. And so, wow. um, yeah, so it's it's running 91, actually 93 octane with the booster. But that five gallon jug might sit, I haven't ridden now in two months, so it's sitting around. And I would not be comfortable doing that if it did not have some type of stabilizer. Either. And that 14 to 1 motor's happy with that, huh? Yeah, it is. So it's, it's running pretty good. That's cool. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, uh, I think our next chapter will be the, uh, the unveiling of the mystery car. Yeah. Again, we appreciate the insight and uh, shoot us an email. You got a question, pose a comment. We'll ask these guys. They know what they're talking about more than I do. Jared, it's always a pleasure. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you.